Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation. And in today's video, we're gonna be installing an amplifier and subwoofer in this 2018 Hyundai Elantra. Now in this video, we're gonna show you how to run all the wiring and install that amplifier to the existing factory radio. Let's get started. All right, so here we're at the bench. Now the parts that were brought to us to be installed in this vehicle. First is this Planet Audio Amplifier. Now this is the AC 1500.1M. Now to support that wattage, we do need a wiring kit. Now it did actually come with this eight gauge wiring kit. It's not truly eight gauge, um, it's more like a 12 gauge. We're gonna actually not use this here today and use a better kit here. But what we'll do is list all the parts that we're gonna be using in the description here today in case you want to pick some up for yourself. Now the subwoofer is not pictured here at the bench, they're already in the trunk. We're going with two 12 inch MTX subwoofers. Now because we are tapping into the factory audio system and we don't have an aftermarket radio in the car, we need some sort of way to pull signal from that factory audio system. Now fortunately, this amplifier does have a high level speaker input. It comes with this harness and essentially we just need to tap this harness and these wires into the factory speaker wire in the vehicle. Now if your amplifier did not have a high level harness, you'll need a line out converter of a sort which essentially is the same principle where these wires will connect into speaker wires in the vehicle and it produces an RCA output where then you'd run those RCAs from the line-out converter to the input of the amplifier. So at this point, we need to start planning out our install. This amplifier, even though it's only putting out 350 watts, it's still really big and unfortunately, it's just so big it won't fit underneath the front seats. So we're gonna be mounting this on the back of the rear seats in the trunk area and we will plan our wiring from there. Now what we're gonna do is grab our power wire from our wiring kit, start planning that route from the battery that's up underneath the hood through the firewall all the way to the trunk area. Underneath the hood here, our battery is located here on the driver's side. Now there is multiple posts here that we can connect wiring to. Looking on the positive side, this is the tightening post, and then we have an accessory post here. We'll be hooking our power wire to this accessory post through an inline fuse, through the firewall to the amplifier itself, which will be located in the trunk. So from this point forward, we need to find access through the firewall so we can run our wire through. All right, so we're here up underneath the steering column. We're gonna look for some firewall access here. Now if we come further underneath, we have a couple of places that we could go through. Here's the factory boot there that we can poke on the side and run wire through like we've done past on the channel. The other one right up there is your hood release grommet. You could pass wire through there. Or if you have the automatic like we do, this is a nice flat spot with nothing back behind it, which we can drill and put our own grommet in. So that's what we're gonna do today in this install is we're gonna drill a 7 16th hole, put a grommet in and run our own wiring through the firewall. Again, if you don't want to drill your own hole, you can look for a grommet to push your wire through, like the one there on the left or the right. That's totally up to you. We're going to be drilling and inserting our own grommet in that factory location. Okay, so we went ahead and drilled our hole there, put the grommet in, and put our wire through. So we're going to take you on the opposite side, engine bay, to show you exactly where that comes on through. All right, that split loom there is exactly where it comes on through, back behind that little panel there. And we split loomed our wire and routed it down, it came up here. Now we put our inline fuse kind of right there and essentially the way that works out, is we put an S-bend and a piece of ABS plastic and it's being sandwiched between the battery and the bracket. And then we mounted our fuse holder on there with an inline fuse. And then this end will actually go right to that positive post on the battery. So with this all ready to go, before we connect it, we wanna make sure we get our amplifier all connected. Additionally, we've also made a little teeny dent within that. So when we're ready, this can hook right on here and the cover will still shut. So at this point of time, we're done underneath the hood. Besides hooking up our power wire when we're ready to do so, let's head inside the car and start running that wire towards the trunk. All right, so we're here in the car with our wire coming through that spot you saw on the firewall. We want to 
tuck our wire up underneath these panels here. Now, based on the gauge of wire, you can just tuck it, just like so, up underneath the panel. You could do it that way, or you could pop these off, and a lot of the time they're just held on with clips. And that should give you even more space to run that wiring up underneath these panels. All right, so with the seat on out, we ran our wire. We're gonna go right along the factory wiring here. We're gonna come up and we're gonna mount our amplifier in the back of the seat. So what we did is got our amplifier all mounted there. That power wire comes up right into the power terminal. Now for the ground, we're gonna run it down and we're gonna utilize one of the seat bolts that go into the body of the vehicle. We also ran a remote turn on wire down which will connect and our speaker wire just kind of goes out there once we get that box all mounted. Next, we have to get our ground taken care of. We'll show you where to do so. And then finally, we need our high level input or RCAs, depending on your application. We're gonna run those out and we're gonna tap in the signal within the B pillar to the signal that goes to this speaker. So that is our plan. We're gonna run that all the way here and tap into the B pillar. Now, as we prepare our ground, we have a wire brush here that we're gonna clean up really well. We have a factory bolt location where we will connect our ground for our amplifier. And now that generally is the anchor for the back of the seat, but we will um, utilize it for our amplifier in this case. Uh, there's plenty other anchor mounts for this seat and it also clips into place. It's not really going anywhere and it's a great accessible spot for our amplifier. So we're gonna get all grounded there. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And once that's completed, then we can start running our signal wire to the beep. So as we prepare our speaker wire input, um, essentially the signal from the factory radio into the amplifier, this is the high level input harness. Now, of course, like I said, if you don't have a high level input harness on your amplifier, you just need a line out converter, which we can link in the description. And uh, you'll use RCAs to the RCA input of the amplifier and install the line out converter and the beep pillar, which we will show you here in a moment. Where we are picking up here, is since we're technically just doing a mono amplifier, we don't need a left channel and a right channel input, so we just tied them together. So we grabbed both positives and both negatives, we soldered on, and have a length of speaker wire that's gonna run to the B-pillar location. So this is gonna be our signal input. This end will solder into the factory speaker lead that's located in the passenger rear B-pillar. So we're gonna tape these up, get everything prepped and bundled, we'll get this installed and run this to the B-pillar. Okay, so we got our ground in, nice and cleaned up. At this point, we're gonna zip tie our remaining wire, especially to the existing wiring here, get everything cleaned up underneath the seat and uh, get everything reinstalled back here. Now we've run our signal wire and our remote turn on wire up underneath this panel. Now we're gonna get ready to pull this B-pillar apart. Up underneath the hood, since now our power and ground on the amplifier is done, we went ahead and connected our power wire there, put a little divot there just so it all clears and this can shut just like so. Got everything zip tied up underneath the hood, split loomed. We can go ahead and shut the hood. All right, so with this pillar off, the wiring that we need to tap into goes into the door. And since we're running a mono amplifier, this is gonna feed both input channels of our mono amp. Now we have a white and a brown, or a tan and a brown, and according to our schematics, brown is gonna be our positive, white is gonna be our negative. So what we did is we stripped the wire back, we soldered onto that wire. Now you can use a T-tap um, to uh, easily tap into that, but we soldered onto that connection without actually breaking the original connection. We're gonna go ahead and tape that on up, reloom the factory harness and zip tie everything in place so it doesn't get in the way of our seat belt. So that takes care of our positive and negative tapped into that. And next we have to run our remote turn on wire and based on wire. We're gonna run forward all the way over to the fuse box to tap in for our remote turn on wire. Okay, so we reassembled our B pillar after connecting our speaker wire. And then we continue running our remote turn on wire and base knob wire. We went underneath the carpet Fish it over the transmission tunnel to the other side, 
pull that out the other side. We still need to mount our base knob, but here's the wire. Ran a remote turn of wire just under the carpet, fished it up, and we went right in here. Now we created an add a circuit, which is simply this second to bottom fuse, right here, this 10 amp. We made an add a circuit, so that is fused and it's soldered on, uh, but we can link the actual add a circuit part in the description here for you, where essentially this allows you to tap into that circuit without impacting that original fuse. So our line here, this is a spare spot for us. It's not actually hooked to any circuit and uh, it's on accessory. So when the key is on, this fuse is hot, which puts 12 volts to this wire, which will turn on our amplifier. So that 10 amp is good to go. Again, we'll add the added circuit um, in the description for you. So that's where we connected our remote turn on wire for the amplifier. Um, and at this point of time, with all the connections made, we can go ahead and start testing and tuning and hear how it's Okay, so everything is all back together, all our kick panels. See so a wipe up, do a quick vacuum, amplifier's all in. Everything's tuned, we use an SMD DD1, set our gains to the factory radio, so it's all good to go and uh, tuned perfectly. Everything clean and zip tied on this side as well. Two 12s here in the trunk. Have our kick panels all back in, just need to do a quick vacuum. Got our fuse cover back on. And we tested everything and it's working great. Now that's about it for this install. If you have any questions on what we did here, post a comment below. Now, like I said before, we're gonna go ahead and link everything that we used in the description, the amp sub wiring, add a circuit, everything that you'll need for your install. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe and post great content on the channel all the time. And we'll see you in the next video.